Yeah. See there, Rich, still in the mix, finishing himself. Coming up on the 
halfway marker. Far from halfway through the pain. Keep on checking in with Rich. The day goes on. Rich, doing the first half of this live stream. And a few other people there in Zoom as well that's taking part. I think uh, Joris Shepherds is in there. Joris being near the front of the group at the moment. Up at the front currently is Mark Robotton. Pushing out 3.7 watts per kilogram. Regular rider for Ratio. Fighting a lot of the team time trials as well. Big powerhouse. Not too far off a small bit of respite in this second climb. Currently pushing in a gradient of 10%. Jerry Shep is here, one of the first people to ever rest on RGT. Wasn't officially recognized back in the day then. When Joris was doing it, there wasn't the um, recognition from the Hells 500 group, so I don't know if he ever received recognition for doing that first ever resting on RGT, but I think he was the first person I, I know of to have done that. I'm going to pull this hairpin. Moment of respite. And a big sign there for precision coaching. Our friends over at Precision Rewards quite often help us out with some codes for the goodie bags. Precision Rewards is a discount scheme you can get involved with. It's free to join or you can have different layers of pricing structures. We usually give away a code for an enhanced membership to the rewards scheme for people who've taken part in the event. Now you to get discounts on big items to do. I've got negotiations with who specialised all sorts of big companies and nutrient companies as well. As Hainowski there is creeping up on the wheel of Shepherds. Rich back into the group with three other riders watching him on the other screen. Managed to get himself some company. I uh, expect he'll stay with those guys into the descent, make the descent much faster, much easier for him. So you can see he's just caught and passed Keith. And see there, Ganowski is coming up to the wheel of Shepherds.
Shep was there being passed and distanced by Hainowski. Hainowski is strong. Hainowski has uh, took part in the men's division of the 24 hour virtual world team time trial that we ran earlier on this year. And Enrique Hainowski was a we managed to cover 241.5 kilometers in 12 hours. He's a member of the 12 hour club, so he must have a lot of stamina there. Keep going for that long. It looks like Chef is just, was just in view then for a moment. He's going to ask you, he's putting down the distance towards Robot in there. Gary Shep is there, just having a momentary power outage. Watching him on the screen, couldn't quite tell what happened, but he did pause for a moment. Uh, his head dropped as we were seeing what was going on now. There, but uh, see the medals, nice little pain cave there, bit of memorabilia on the wall, and Joris rocking to and fro up this climb, and as much power as possible.
comfortably ahead of Steve and his next rider on the road. Looking to catch back up with Inowski. These stands can make all the difference. A little bit of a loss of parity at the moment from RGT in the top right hand corner. You can see that Doris is climbing a slope of 7%, but it looks like the slope below the, the graphical indication is the slope that my bots are trying to climb up. It looks like it's paused, but they're, they're near 10% gradient that Joris is uh, attacking there. That's the pain that Joris is feeling in his legs. Mark Robottom still out on the front there. Only 900 meters in front of Jeppers, but he's being closed down by Hinowski. But earlier on, Hinowski, a 12 hour rider from the Virtual World Time Trial Championships. It's a lot of power over a long period of time. A lot of endurance riders not necessarily able to push it out in the earlier parts of events, but they can continue going at higher powers than a lot of us. Short to distance riders, a lot of us mere mortals. Pajowski, your riders back there, pushing out in a five watts per kilogram. A lot of riders from the Rassio Racing Team showed up today. Hit that first segment. Made a race of it and carried on to complete the event. Stevens, a oh, nice consistent four watts per kilogram there. 12% slope. Stacey Welsh there as well. Another rider that was with us through the six hours of the Virtual World Time Trial Championships. Don't forget, guys, if you are interested in training for an event, you've got something coming up in the future, React offer training plans, lots of information and help. I encourage you to check them out. We also offer training sessions every Monday night, 6.30 on Wahoo RGT, which are free to join in with. The live coaching workouts and also answer any questions while you're there Stacey Welsh was the highest placed woman in the six hour category. Placed third overall. And in those six hours, managed to knock off 167.8 kilometers. Huge distance.
We just saw Stacey on the road. This is Brian Welsh. Brian Stacey's has been, and um, Brian took part in the Virtual World Time Trial Championships as well. Unfortunately, Brian wasn't feeling very well on the day, so he only rode for the six hours. I mean, he only rode for six hours in support of Stacey. And Brian clocked up 182.8 kilometers. For a man who wasn't feeling very well, Pretty significant distance.
just checking in with Rich. He's just cresting that climb and jumping into the descent. This is a time where Rich will be enjoying a, a moment's respite. Time to have a little drink. Make sure the hydration and the fueling is going right. And we may be getting a message from Rich coming through. Oh, he's listening to the live stream and he's telling me I'm wrong. <laughs> Rich is on the, uh, that little plateaued section in the middle, just having a little breather there. He's, unfortunately, he is not quite at the top. He's got a little bit more pain on this climb. He's got a quiz to look forward to, though. Hope you guys are all checking out the quiz. And a little bit of something to keep your minds occupied on the descent so you don't uh, drift away from the pain that you're all feeling. Yeah, Rich back climbing again here now. And uh, I'm sure he's be looking forward to that descending section. Let's just see where, where Rich is exactly. Rich up on the full screen, see him in his full glory. I can see just in the distance there is Keith. And Keith has been around and about Richard for a while now. And Nugba, Daniel Nugba, one of the lads from Pedalers, he's up in the distance. I can see there the mountains, the, all these mountains, all these cliff faces it's all created from the brain of rgt the computer locally puts together all these graphics all these trees and things and uh does it all automatically the rich has just messaged me to say that once he's over the top he's going to run through the answers to the first quiz so hopefully we'll be able to pull that in through the zoom link and get all the information through there. He's currently on mute, so I'm not going to zoom play and we're live with Richard as he's suffering. Um, we'll jump forward in this view and see Daniel Nugba. Sorry. We'll see Matre Rajowski, Harold Treese, another rider that's joined us from We've taken part in the virtual world time car championships. See Krajowski coming up on the wheel of Harold Cheese Trees here. Through a tight hairpin. Gradient popping there. Krajowski just coming up to the wheel of Harold Trees. See the road disappearing down there. One of those hairpins, that lower section of the road. Think that this comes out of the mind of a computer. Really interesting to see where technology has gone from the days when I was playing Pong, which was just a white line on a computer screen, to this sort of level of graphics and thinking from a computer. Yaski got to the wheel of Harold Trees there, but Harold being valiantly battling. Yaski saving just a few precious watts here on the wheel. Only eight watts. Harold just finds the right gear. Slap, starts pulling away slightly. Patrice. Bete. Stevens. Very Shepherds. Coming through the technical area there. If any of you wanted to get your bikes fixed, that's where you can jump off. Kianowski, 
over the top and enjoying this descent now. Row bottom, having managed to keep a gap over the top there. Hinowski was closing in fast. Speed up 63, 65 kilometers. See if any auto braking hits in here as we go around this corner. No auto braking, very, very slight auto braking. These smooth corners allowing riders to take the racing line. Keep the speed all the way down the descent. Keep plowing on. Checking with that row bottom, our leader there. He's just I think 60 kilometers per hour there. Bottom 60 k's per hour plus on this descent and flying through. Full arrow took. Hainowski behind is still applying power though. Hainowski is on at 2.8, 3.5 watts per kilogram. We'll see whether that makes a difference for Hainowski as he's coming down. Um, from what we've seen in this descent, quite smooth corners. Not much need to power up after the corners. Whether he's managing to get above speeds that Mark is achieving here. You can see he's going into a corner here. Applying any power, so really suffering. And this will auto break. Auto break through that corner. Is Mark going to apply any power to get the speed back up? No, he's just going to roll through. Sign for React there. Let's say React. Richard Akers, co founder of the online events company, very active in the RGT community. Training sessions every Monday night, 6 30 pm, which are free to join. Anybody who's looking for further information, further help to meet their training goals, Richard is able to create dedicated training plans for you and set you up. Always more effective to have a coach and yourself meeting those goals, meeting those, achieving what you want to do much quicker, much easier with the assistance of a coach. I personally find it always easier to have someone to answer to. It's very easy to just make the excuses and drop out of the training session yourself when you've got a coach on board who's giving you that little extra nudge and analyzing those figures for you and telling you what you need to do to improve. Much more difficult to say, ooh, I'll have a beer tonight. It's Mark now entering the Final elements of this ride. 32 kilometers remain to go, but 
maybe into the final climb. This bull descending up until our final climb. No work for him to do, really. Switch over to Richard Akers. Enjoy watching his few moments of pain as he's coming up to the top of this climb. Hopefully Rich will be able to fill us in with information that we need for these quizzes. Rich there on the saddle, put in a big effort. Big effort. There's some chat coming through as well on the in-game chat. Richard there just playing through a few of the, v the views that you can have in RGT and just showing you the look behind feature there. Whenever you're racing, this is a common feature that you see that the riders just switch their head to the side and take a, a sneak peek behind. And you can see that those riders then, they're, they're looking how much of a gap they've got. Rich just seeing how much of a space he had over Keith there. And it is an important feature when the, the racing's getting going, when you're in a breakaway, just to make sure you're maintaining your distance and keeping yourself out, keeping that gap constant. Rich on an 8% gradient here, pushing hard to get over it. Zoom feed, you can probably see some advertisements running there above Rich's head for React Coaching. Predominantly try coaching, but all manners of cycling coaching undertaken and currently taking part in the React Power Project. is a project to gain as much knowledge about everybody's power and training for power basically it's a if you go to the react website there's some power tests that you can do there help categorize you and power is a fantastic metric to show you how you can improve on the bike 
something as well that's really easy to get the information from when you're doing a turbo session. It's so easy to, to get the information, also so easy to follow it as well. You're not having to worry about steering and things like you do in the, the real world when you're out on a ride. Mark Rowbottom, just on the flatter section now. Uh, Rich just throwing a wave out there. Again, showing the features that RGT has there in the little settings. RGT has a Wahoo RGT remote app. Heath comes up on the wheel of Rich there. Heath conscious of staying there for the descent. Obviously wants to hear Rich shouting out these answers. Um, so yeah, Wahoo RGT have a remote app that's worth looking at. It's an app that you can download to your phone or mobile device, a tablet, something small that you can have on you near the bike. And it takes away the constant need to be reaching over to the mouse or the keyboard. You can do a lot of the features. It just acts as a remote app. You can activate, look behind, um, chat, and a lot of the other features through the remote app. And it saves you having multiple devices. If you're, for instance, on the ATV, the Apple TV, you can just use the touch screen. One point to note, and I do mention this frequently because it's caught me out on multiple occasions, is that you don't want to have that um, touch screen device getting sweaty. Because if you do, then it can cause you some issues and um, you don't want that happening and ending your ride. Hinowski just going past Robottom there. Hinowski and Robottom now together as they enter this final climb. As I say, Hinowski, endurance rider. Uh, perhaps not the fastest off the line, but has lots of power in the long term. It'll be interesting to see how this shapes up between Hanowski and Rowe Bottom going into this final climb. They are nearing the bottom of this final climb now. Unfortunately, RGT is um, playing about a little bit with the gradients and things. Can't quite see on the view there of where Hanowski and Robotom, I can tell you from a, another view that I've got that they are just entering the final section of descent from that second climb. Any moment now it's going to go green and they will be on the flatter sections. Coming through there. Mr. Canoe there, our favourite Canadian superhero, just getting in and jumping in on the chat. I haven't seen Falk Levian actually, it's, uh, I'm sure Falk was going to be joining us for this ride. Which now passes the 60k marker there, those milestones, as referred to as gravestones on the side of the road. Prepping himself up for these answers. Mr. Canoe's in there riding, just dropping out for a while, but hoping to get back before everyone finishes. Catch it on the live stream as well. 22.25 kilometers remaining now for Hinowski and Robottom. Member of Team Lou, Mr. Canoe, fantastic, fantastic bloke, really. Yeah, that's a, that's a good way of describing it. He's uh, very active in Team Lou. Um, joins in on the Team Lou rides on most Saturdays and Sundays, and helps shepherding people around. He's uh, often one of the riders who's taking new riders around the course and making sure they make it to the end. Kurt Lang in there as well again, another member of Team Lou. Very friendly bunch if you're looking for a team to join. Lots of 
Lots of teams sprung up around RGT. Richard now just shaking his hands out. Pressure points on the bike. Always a big thing. Making sure you've got your bike set up correctly. You're not stretching too much. And if you're getting pain in your hands, it can be quite important to work on your core strength, improving your stomach and your back muscles, making sure that you're not putting too much pressure on those contact points. A good thing about having the road bars, you've got plenty of places to grip. You can move your hands around, alleviate some of the pressure. Now I've got extra padded gloves because I uh, don't cycle enough, basically. A little bit too fat, a little bit too slow, and tend to lean a bit too hard on my hands. So the padded gloves just helps with that. Powerful tunnel issues, that numbness of the fingers. Probably should double wrap my bars, but I keep on saying that I'm going to go into a routine of uh, planking and sit ups, make sure I get stronger. Need a coach, don't I? That's what I need. Which is almost infinite, this last section of climb is concentrating on that profile looking to get this bit knocked off we'll jump into the front of the race with Janowski and Robot and we did set a section on the beginning of this race for those who really wanted to race hard and um, we were looking to put on a pro exhibition race on a Friday evening but for one reason or another we had to uh cancel that this week this time around but something that we do look to put forward go forward into the events in future is to have that exhibition race where we can invite teams to take part but instead this time around what we did was made the first section of the race a segment so you can all compare your times anybody that just wanted to jump in and race that first part could do so get a segment time and then compare themselves to everybody else who raced it as well Inowski just taking the lead here as the gradient starting to turn slightly upwards for these lead men. Little blip of red and then back into the green before the climb starts proper. Uh, Richard and he. locked together important for Richard to, Richard to stay on the wheel of Keith as he's going up to the top of this climb and you'll see the two riders slip streaming each other and yo-yoing without hardly any effort from themselves as the algorithm in RGT takes over and gives them that drafting benefit from being behind and that'll slingshot them into the lead Av Paltlevian joins us. He's chatting in the in-game chat there. Try and check in with Falk there. I've uh, been set up as a challenge road today, so it is possible for riders to jump in and out. But if you do leave for too long, you will be put in at the beginning of the ride. And um, I'm sure after you've done a significant amount of climbing, that is not something that you want to do. So if you are taking a break for any, at any point, for any reason, then make sure you keep that break short and sweet. We would recommend no more than 15 minutes. I think the absolute cutoff is 25 minutes for RGT to consider you a, a dead avatar and to kick you out of the game. But if you keep that timing to 15 minutes, then you are sure you're going to be able to get back on the bike before your time ends.
Keith just stealing a little bit of a march on Richard here. Richard trying to close that gap. You can see in the top left hand corner there for Richard that we've got the drafting uh, graphic animation there as Keith is trying to really, really open up a gap on Richard here. He doesn't want Richard on his wheel on the descent. Richard perhaps just putting off for a moment, coming round to those answers from the quiz. He's trying to keep up with Keith. But uh, Keith has gone. He's opened up a gap. He's not allowing Richard to draft on his wheel there. Oh. Well, good gamesmanship from Keith there. He's, he's gone. Um, that's not flavor of the month with Rich, though. <laughs> but that's what racing's all about, guys. Is uh, that little bit of gamesmanship, that bit of making sure you get the gap. A rich, very close to the top of this climb now. Catch up with the front riders. Rich still pushes on. Uh, Keith perhaps went too early there. Rich using his uh, constant power there to just reel Keith back in, I think. Mark Rowbottom there. It's been distanced by 245 meters by Hainowski. And Hainowski is clear at the front of this ride. Gradient 6 7%. Hainowski managing to keep. Just a little bit more power. Perhaps uh, an extra match dry than. Mark was able to there. You know, 270 watts per kilogram. Continues into this final climb. As I say, unfortunately, RGT deciding to um, miss off some of the rider dots on the full profile map across the bottom of the screen there. You can see them in Rich's screen and they are early into the final slope. Back to Rich now and watch him comes around the final hairpin and into a nice little bit of climb. See a smile on Rich as he comes around this corner. I'm hoping that Rich has got himself muted at the moment. He's, he's still, he's got more to go? Never! Oh man, a little bit, a little bit. I thought that hairpin was everything. His dot looks very much like he's at the end of that climb. 300, 340 watts, 360 watts, pushing it, pushing it out of the saddle, climbing, 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 9%. Three hours, 11 minutes into this ride for Rich. Three hours, 11 minutes. Keith, again, pushing the power on as he got to the top there, not wanting Richard to get back to his wheel. Any clear space. Rich finally over the top and sits back, breathes a sigh of relief, gulps some air, jumps on his phone. Hey, he's gonna have a little snack break. We'll avoid watching Rich eat because he loosens off his shoes. That was something that came up in the comments the other day as well. Um, a lot of riders habit of having the shoes tight and uh, if you ride with your shoes tight consistently when you possibly don't need to and um, you can end up with numb feet so 
and a little something that Rich is just showing you there, a little tip for you when you're riding is uh, when you're going easy, slacking your shoes off perhaps slightly and just allow yourself to have a moment's respite, a moment's peace and uh, get some blood flow back into your feet. We're going to let Rich just have a, a moment to eat and we're going to follow Anowski for a second up at the front of the race. Anowski clear with Mark Rowbottom 128 meters behind and then Hanowski just coming up in a small section of respite now split the screen and the two riders at the front of this ride we've got Hanowski and Mark Rowbottom Riding fantastically, both with loads of power. Yeah, Mark Robottom's power just drifting slightly on this second climb, but 110 watts now. Ray Shepherd's teammate of Mark Robottom's just at 1.13 kilometers behind. Shepherds. With 18.27 kilometers remaining.
Hi everyone. So we're going to go through some results now for the first quiz. 
And then uh, I'll run through the questions for the second quiz. Um, annoyingly, I'm just coming into the final ascent. So I'm going to have to uh, turn my resistance feedback right down, I think. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to talk. Sure, Graham won't mind too much. Pushing on, on the zone. Right, so uh, question answer to the first quiz then. Uh, so question one was, who won the last year's Welter Espana? The answer is Remco Evanapol. Um And the Belgians went absolutely nuts. Um, I don't know if you, hopefully you knew that one. Um, number two, who was known as the cannibal? Eddie Merckx, uh, well known, uh, probably potentially greatest of all time. Although, um, very big argument for Mariana Voss being uh, the greatest of all time. Um, and some unimaginative media types also call Mariana Voss the, the cannibal as well. Um, personally, I think she deserves her own nickname. Um, number three, who was the first w uh, winner of the women's Paris Bay in 2020? Answer is Lizzie Dignan. Uh, if you watch that, it was an absolutely filthy race. Um, just slipping and sliding all over the place, proper mud fest. And she just absolutely dominated. Bro went off in a breakaway, um, not expecting to win. And then basically, nobody could just get up to her again because <laughs> she was the only one able to keep it upright. Um, number four, where is this year's Cyclocross World Championships being held? Hoogerheide. That's next week. Um, it's going to be an absolute belter. Uh, I don't think the big three, I don't think Pickock, Van der Poel and Van Aert are going to be there, sadly. But it does mean we're going to get a world champion uh, on the men's side, at least, from the pure cross riders, which I think is pretty deserved, frankly. They race every week. And those boys just dip in when they fancy it. And um, well, number five, in what year did Chris Freen win the first Grand Tour, his first Grand Tour victory? Now, this one you may not have known. So everyone obviously thinks about his Tour de France win in 2013, uh, but actually in 2011, uh, he was he won the Welter. So uh, it, it, in real time, it was Jose Cobo, Juan Jose Cobo who won it. Uh, but then in 2019, was done for doping offences. So the win was given to uh, Chris Froome. So he was actually Britain's first ever Grand Tour winner. Um, and you got to feel sorry for him. All those accolades and all the bum kissing went to Bradley Wiggins. Still very diverse, dessert, don't get me wrong. But really, yeah, it's Chris Shreen that won the first Grand Tour. Um, how many senior world championships? Question number six, Did Mariana, does Mariana Voss have to her name? Um, across all the disciplines, 13 world championships she's won. Two track titles. Can't remember which ones because I don't really care about track cycling, if I'm honest. Um, <laughs> she's then won uh, three road titles. I think the first one was when she was 19. Um, and then also eight cyclocross titles. Again, I think that was the same year. I think she, her first one, I think she won road and cyclocross when she was 19. Absolutely nuts. Number seven, um, who won the 1995 Tour of Flanders wearing the... Uh, uh, Mappe jersey, which is up in the quiz if you if you go on to the actual quiz itself. Uh, Johan Musso, who is a bit of a Flandrian legend. Um, if you go over to Flanders at all, they absolutely love him over there. Everything's Johan Musso. And he's done a... I think he did a few things with RGT, actually, when RGT was a little bit younger. Uh, number eight, which of the famous climbs that we mentioned um, will take you the highest point above sea level? Now the options were Stelvio, Col de Tourmalet, Mont Ventoux and Alto Az. And that is the order. So Stelvio, Stelvio will take you up to 2,757. Col de Tourmalet is the next at 200, at 2,115. Ventoux, and this is gonna hurt some people now, only goes up to 1,909 meters. But when you do it three times, yeah. Don't wanna complain too much about that, I don't think. And then finally Alto Az, uh, the actual pass, that you take over the top of Alderweirs is only at 1860. Um, so I always I found interesting. I assumed um, Alderweirs is going to be right up there, but it's a ski resort Alderweirs um, with the 21 switchbacks. So actually, not as high as the others. 
number nine, um, who's the current men's hour world record holder, and that is Felipe Ghana. Bit of an obvious that one, that one. He's basically just got like, you know, he's just two legs and a head, basically. Uh, number 10, for which team does Annemiek van Vluten ride for? That's Movistar. Uh, they built the entire team around it, essentially. Um, and for good reason. Number 11, the summer, which is the, that famous chapel photo. Uh, that's from Mervan Garadsbergen. So there's a chapel and it's where all the, all the really famous photographs of like Kanselara, etc., busting themselves. Um, and you've got like the, the fans in the chapel in the background. There's one really famous photo in particular, and that's at the Mur van Garadsbergen, um, also known as the Wall of Garadsbergen. Um, number 12, at which race does the winner receive a piglet as a prize? Troy Bro Leon. And if you've not seen it, guys, uh, check it out. It's a super cool race. It's basically like, uh, it's kind of like Paris Roubaix. Lots of gravel, lots of uh, cobbles. It's nuts. It's a relatively young race. Um, and yeah, it's, it's very trendy. Uh, so you go on the website. The website is actually a nightmare. It's just too cool for me. Like, I need everything like bullet pointed. It's too like edgy, too much great photography <laughs> and cool music. Uh, but Trevor and Leon, yeah, they win a piglet. I don't know what they do with the piglet, don't ask me. Yeah, best to leave it at that one, I think. Uh, number 13, who is the current men's cyclocross world champion? Uh, and that's Tom Hickok. Um, you know, you're likely to think it might be Van Er or Van Pol. But Hickok, uh, they actually, I don't think they did the world champs last year. Not to say that Hickok isn't a worthy winner. Uh, 14, where is the track cycling world champions this year? Sir Chris Hoy, Velodrome, Glasgow. All the world championships are happening pretty much at the same time in Glasgow. I think it's the first time it's ever been done. Um, but everyone is convening in the same place. So BMX, track, time trialing, road race, crit, all of it, same place. So that's gonna be super cool. And it's great that it's um, in Scotland. I'm gonna be able to get up there for any of that. And then the final question for the first quiz was, how many riders have been able to win three months in a single year? Single year? One guy, talking on the men's side, Eddie the Cannibal Mercs. One guy has won three monuments in a year. And you would have thought, really, that would have been more regular than that. But but no, he's the one and only. And one of the reasons why he's widely regarded as the, the greatest of all time. Uh, so that's the first quiz, guys. And I see a lot of you are on the, the second descent. So we'll just go for the second quiz now. Um, and this is, uh, you've got quite a few of us onto the second ascent now. Um, so you might not be able to think too much, but you can see these quizzes after the fact, if you fancy it. Um, and this one's a lot harder. So if you had the, the sense to do the second quiz first on the first ascent, yeah, probably a wise thing to do because you're probably yeah, breathing out of areas where you shouldn't be breathing. Uh, so it's quiz number two. We'll go through this relatively quickly because I know you probably haven't got too much capacity to think too much. Um, fair the drug scan okay um that was the one where you had police raiding riders all i think what size was the team then all nine riders i think that's i think they had nine riders in two of that, that those those days um yeah all nine riders got arrested i think 10 people around the team are convicted um so when did that happen that 91 95 or 98 Many of us will actually. How old was I? I was like, I was like ten. So I'll, I'll pretend that I remember that. Um, number two, from which city in Belgium is Wout van Aert from? Options are Ghent, Namur, or Herentals. Okay. From which city is Wout van Aert from in Belgium? Ghent, Namur, or Herentals. Number three. Name the four men who have won the Tour de France five times. Okay, four guys. Let's see if you can guess their names. I'm not gonna give you any options for that one. That's pure recall, that one. Okay, number four. Who is currently the highest ranked male rider in the world? We'll give you some options for this. Remco and Van der Poel, Tadej Pogacar, 
interested to see who people for on that one. So who's the current male rider in the world? Ivanapol Pogacar or Van Ert. Um, and then likewise, who's the highest ranked female rider in the world? This will be interesting. Is it Elisa Longo Borghini? Rides a Trek Sega Fredo, Lotta Kopecky. I think she is SD Works. And Van Vluten, as you've heard earlier from Movistar. Which, was, which of these three is the highest ranked female rider in the world at the moment? Um, number six. In the last five editions, which Grand Tour has the most cumulative elevation? So over the last kind of five years, um, COVID being an exception, um, which of the Grand Tours has had the most climbing? Giro Tour or Vuelta? Okay, uh, number seven, who won the 1998 Tour de France prologue riding for Credit Agricole? They're really boring kit. Um, yes, yeah, so that's the same year as the Pestina affair. Oh no, I just ruined that. Damn it. Ah, okay. <laughs> well, you got the answer to question one. Damn it. <laughs> In my head, I was literally saying, do not say the year. That's your, <laughs> I said it. That's so stupid. I mean, the worst quiz master ever. Okay, so uh, forget the question one. You know the answer to that. Question seven. The options are Lance Armstrong, Tor Hushod, or Chris Boardman as to who won the 98 prologue. Um, <laughs> uh, question, uh, what are we, eight? Um, I can't do that one over commentary. It's the name of two people, it's a picture round. So get onto the quiz. Um, you need to tell us who the people are and what they have in common. What is it that they both have? And uh, number nine, um, using which group set to Jonas Vingegaard or Vingego, I don't know how you pronounce it, ride to victory in the Tour de France in 22, 2022? Was it Campagnolo, Shimano or Shram? So which group set was he riding when he won? Um, again, another picture round. Uh, so I can't do that, but you need to guess who the gentleman in the photo is for question 10. Um, slightly more obscure figure, perhaps. Uh, but have a look on the quiz, get that link from the um, email that we sent out. Number 11, which of the five monuments, so there's five of them, the big one day races is known as the Sprinters Classic. Okay. Which of the five monuments is known as the Sprinters Classic? And bonus point, you can name all five monuments. So number 12, excluding level two races, which country had the most professional wins in 2022? I was surprised by the answer to this one. Okay. I won't tell you why. But the options are Italy, Belgium, or France. I was surprised. Um, sorry, bear with me. Every time I go back a screen, it goes right up to the top again. So I have to keep scrolling down. So bear with me. So uh, which, of the, which countries had the most professional wins in 2022? Number 13. Who was the surprise second place finisher at the 2022 edition of Liège, Bastogne Liège? beating Wout Van Aert in a sprint at the end. Up there, I can't remember what it's called. Is it Murder Hoy in the edge? I can't remember. Um, the options are Alejandro Valverde. Got a bit of my smash in. Biniam Gamay or Quinton Hermans. So who was a surprise second place finisher at 2022 uh, Liège-Bastogne Liège beating Wout Van Aert? Um, Done that one, done that one. Oh, there we go, let's see. Uh, number 14, which female cyclist bagged the most pro wins in 2022? Was it Annemiek van Vluten, Elisa Balsamo, she's a sprinter, or Lorena Weebs? So who bagged the most pro wins in 2022? Annemiek van Vluten, Balsamo, or Lorena Weebs? So nearly there, nearly there, nearly there. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Um, and number 15, final question. Uh, which of the climbs um, listed 
is the most visited climb ever in professional cycling. So Col d'Ez, Col de Perisord, <laughs> or Montjuic. So Col d'Ez, Col de Perisord, or Montjuic. Okay, so those are your 15 questions uh, for quiz two. You can find those uh, questions um, on via the link we made available on the email we sent out shortly before the race. So have a look at that. Take you know, take your time over a little bit. I'll do a bit when we do our little wrap up at the end of the race at the end of the event. I'll give out some answers if you're not done it. So we'll give you a heads up so you can kind of do earmuffs if you don't want to know the answers. I want to do a quick bit in your own time. But there you go, guys. That's probably enough from me now, I think. Um, so I will hand back to Riley. Uh, sorry about the visual there, guys. Uh, for some reason, Zoom keeps on jumping out. hope you've got the audio nice and clear all the way through that. Um, Richard, obviously, taking it too easy, I think. Uh, it was supposed to have been done on the descent, but it was uh, dragged out a little bit by myself there. So Richard had to power down and do it on his ascent. Um, interesting point there that's probably worth mentioning to do a legitimate v everesting which i'm sure some of you guys who are taking part in this event will be looking to do at some point you have to have your turbo trainer set to 100 percent of reality so um for comparison for um a little bit of background information zwift always sets their default effort to 50 percent so if you were climbing um, Mont Ventoux, it would be half as hard. It'd take you twice as long, but it'd be half as hard. Um, it kind of makes you feel like you're a better climber in some ways. With RGT, it defaults to 100%, so whatever gear ratio you've got on your bike is what you'll be climbing the hill with. So my home bike, I have a 28 cog on the rear. Um, if I'm climbing something significant like Mont Ventoux, that is probably not what I'd choose to ride. I'm a little bit of a chunkier guy, a bit of a bigger frame. Um, so I'll probably go to a 32. There is a feature in RGT called slope intensity. It can be um, reached through the remote app. I'm sure that there's some way of reaching it through the, the main app as well. Um, and it allows you to reduce the slope intensity by percentages of 5%. This does not make it any less of a climb. You still need to output the same amount of power. You still need to put in the same effort. The difference is that it will give you a bigger virtual gear on the cassette. So if you are currently struggling on these climbs, feeling like your knees are going to explode and thinking that you're going to do some long-term damage, then I suggest you look up that slope intensity and you dial it down slightly. It will give you those extra virtual gears to allow you to spin and not be a grinding like crazy. We see Stevens here is climbing well. They've got a cadence up at 76, which is pretty good cadence for a climb of a 10% slope. They may well indeed be using that feature to dial down the slope intensity, but they're doing really well. Um, they are third on the road. It looks like Mark Robottom, for whatever reason, whether they come to the end of the, their time to ride, but they've dropped out and it's now Stevens, Shepherds, and Hainowski on the front of this course. Moving up, we've got Shepherds there. They say Shepherds is one of the first people that I know of to have VF rested on RGT. Um, commonly used is Stelvio. They well, I think that the general perception is that it's a slightly easier climb to Everest than Mont Blanc Um Just sits a little bit better on the gradient. Uh, but, you know, there are people who've Everested all roads, all different types of roads. Uh, Sergio Saldano is a popular rider in RGT. He's all over the place. He's done a roam, and on his roam, he took in a little section of each of the, the roads, the real roads on RGT. He's not done one recently with the addition of Dunoon, which has been recently added. As Richard mentioned earlier on, 
um, the UCI doing something new this year. They're putting all of the events around Glasgow and the Dunoon course is not too far away from there. RGT not affiliated with the UCI, so they aren't able to do any official courses, but it wouldn't surprise me if that course bore some similarity to uh, one of the courses that's gonna be used in the events in and around the championships. We also wouldn't be surprised if there were some more courses added in the near future. As Shepherds now enters the last 10 kilometers, 10.8, I'm sure that 0.8 is feeling every bit of it, and 3,236 meters of elevation. That's uh, some good climbing for a Saturday morning. Hey now, Ski, with under 10k left to go, and 3,404 meters in the legs. Acres still on Zoom as we have Jerry Shepherds and Brian Welsh on Zoom as well. And um, let's try and get to them. Oh, Edita has joined in as well tonight. In Falk on the course, I'm gonna have to have a look around for Falk. So we're with Hinoski for a moment. And I'll jump around in the course to see if we can find Falk Levian. Dieter Doberman, another rider that's been in the Virtual World Time Trial Championships. So with Panowski now, seeing the power that he's putting out towards the end of this climb. Falk Levian. Falk, another member of the Team Lou Club on RGT. If you check them out on Facebook, as I say, they're, they're a very friendly bunch. They run rides on the Saturdays and Sundays, and there's also some midweek rides now on uh, Wednesdays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, I think, as well. So um, if you're not doing the group ride with React on the Mondays at 6 30, then you know, check out the Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday ride with the Team Lou guys. Falkler riding the Buffalo bike. For those who aren't familiar with RGT, perhaps new to the platform, they are supporters of World Bicycle Relief. And part of the thing that World Bicycle Relief does is to provide bicycles, these very individual, very easy to spot bikes into countries where transport is perhaps um, not ideal and it allows people in the country to travel around uh, whether that be to get to the shops or to take a child to school or a doctor or a postman making the rounds and um, it allows for a lot more to happen in those areas and a lot more um, interaction between the society but also what they do as part of their mission is that they grab somebody in one of the villages, they grab in a nice manner, and they will teach them how to uh, maintain um, and run, repair these buffalo bikes. So it doesn't just, they don't just go in and, and airdrop in a load of bikes and then walk off. They try and build a structure around it that keeps these bikes running and keeps the all of the area working together keep these bikes in tip-top condition doing the job that they've been put into the area to do um, which is just generally to improve the lives of the people around them i think they do that quite successfully yeah going back to the bike briefly and falk why he's riding it uh, um
We with Dieter now. Dieter is also another rider from the Virtual World Time Trial Championships. Good to see a lot of the riders who have rode that event are coming back to ride future events with us. 
And Dieter, I don't think you'd mind me saying, is a slightly older rider. Um, but still riding a lot. Riding fantastically and enjoying RGT. Being able to ride indoors. Dieter, in the last few years, has had some unfortunate incidents. He's had some... Uh, Accidents. I think he was saying to me that he'd broken his back in one of the accidents in a number of places and that now riding inside in the virtual world much safer and much happier to do so and he's happier to get more miles in inside um, without the risk of any injury and none of us want to get injured really do we? that's the, the deal and all we all want to be um, healthy and fit to ride another day. mentioning before so Falk riding the buffalo bike the buffalo bike is behind a say a paywall but it's probably on a more accurately a whitelist um, so RGT every now and again they do a challenge that enables you to get extra equipment different equipment um, but it's not available to the mass populace and Falk during the January of last year I think it was Road the equivalent height of Everest during a month, and as a result of supporting the World Bicycle Relief Charity and doing that, he was able to buy the Buffalo Bike, which is now sports in most of his events, bringing extra publicity and shining a light on the charity more frequently because the bike stands out like a sore thumb whenever you're in a pack with a load of guys riding races. Um, but there is other bikes entering the RGT world now. But bear in mind the bikes don't really make a massive difference to how you ride. The um, effort that you put in is related to your legs unlike a lot of the other games that are around at the moment which are focusing very much on uh, changing the pressure of your tyres, the wheels that you use, how um, aero your bike is, RGT is just concentrating on getting a few factors right and that is the drafting and the power. So they give you a bike, all the bikes are the same CDA, your character in the game is the same CDA and the um, weight of the bikes are all 7.7 kilograms. Some people approve of that and think that's the best way to do it. Some people don't. Um, RGT uses a server side drafting dynamic to give very, very accurate drafting. So when you're behind somebody, um, it does pick you up very well and gives you accurate drafting. Whereas some of the other platforms use a, uh, what's the word? Fuzzy drafting logic so um, you can be in and out of, well you you would normally be in and out of the draft but it, uh, it allows you to stay in that draft because they can't be accurate enough with your avatar positioning to give you a full-on um, drafting proper drafting thing.
Got Rich's Zoom feed back up now. I can see how much Rich is suffering. Can't see beads of sweat dropping off his forehead at the moment though, so if you've possibly taken it too easy here. I wonder if we can shout out any words of encouragement for everybody else that's out there. Go with him into using a little bit of his extra breath. I think he might have muted me though, which is a good shout. I'd mute me too if he could. the 91 kilometer marker that Reggie's just passed there. 
up in front of him, closing in. You can see Daniel Nugbu. fluids there. Common thoughts are that you should be drinking around about 500 milliliters of fluid every hour. Every hour? Or is it a liter an hour? Oh! Figures have just dropped out of my head. And I'm not even stressed. I'm not riding. <laughs> um, let's put it this way. You should drink a lot. And likely when you're doing indoor cycling, you should be drinking a little bit more. And um, quite often temperatures creep up. You're not getting the wicking effect. You're not getting cooling as much. So it's a good idea to drink a little bit more when you're riding indoors. Make sure you keep those fluid levels up and don't forget to eat. You know, riding indoors, if anything, you should be drinking more. And you should have availability of fluids as well. Don't forget to have a table with you, get everything you need there got loads of space not as much difficulty in doing things like that you can have it next to you and you can really um, have a variety of food drinks available straight away average there four hours 13 minutes in distancing Richard there. Then Danny actually came from behind. Richard, I thought Richard was catching it, but Danny actually came from behind and just gone past him. Richard did have the quiz to go through, so I think he should be allowed a few extra meters on the ride for that. Whilst everybody else was concentrating on keeping sustained power, Richard was busy giving out answers and questions to the quiz. on the front of the ride and also he's going to be the first ride to finish um, 2.59 kilometers remaining and still a good consistent power of 240 watts there over the 100 kilometer mark century ride for Hinowski there
Ask him now. 2.08 kilometers remaining. Still grinding on at 10.8% now. Over 11 as we're going into this bend. One, one, two, the gift that keeps on giving. A third of the ascents, possibly the worst save for last. Dita just checking in with me on the chat, on the messenger, we're on the socials as well. And a uh, great mental attitude from Dita. Uh, this ride is all about focus. Stay on the bike, low gears, 70 plus cadence. May take 12 hours, but that's fine with me. So Dita's in there for the long haul. He just wants to complete this ride. commitment to yourself I think having that mental resilience to get through Yanowski is showing that as he comes up on four and a half hours of ride time There's 1.47k remaining Enrico Switched over to Stacey Welsh there at an opportune moment as Stacey just took a pause. Back underway now. Good to see. And look through some of the other riders as Inowski is creeping up on the finish. Lang enjoying the glory of this descent. No power being put in, but loads of speed being enjoyed. 73.5, oh, so over 74, 75 kilometers. Will we get up to 70? Nope, not quite 76k on this descent on the Argon 19. In full aero tuck. 
sure that's ECI compliant as we are there going down past the rear coaching on the road the line events company and as Hanowski just goes under the one kilometer marker Lang passes Richard Akers Richard on the way up, Kurt on the descent. All those beautifully colourful road hoardings. A mountain in the distance there that Kurt's got to climb in a moment. So this is a magic road that we've created here. Magic roads are something that's available in RGT and it allows you to recreate roads from rides that you've done or you can even use it to create roads from um, imaginary places or even things, places where you wouldn't take your bike. Um, apps, etc. Not suitable for bikes, you can recreate them on magic roads. Uh, one of the options for Magic Roads that we're looking at for the online events company is to recreate event courses so that you can have a, a run through, a trial, a test on the event courses in order to practice. I had a conversation with Will Usher, who's a coach for Precision Racing, and he was talking about how he uses the RGT platform to go through full fueling and race strategies with his riders. They set up a day and they run it as a race. He's got sections that are in there where they have to sprint as if they're going to be overtaking somebody, and pauses for feed stations or slow down for feed stations, etc, etc. Even to the extent where they do practicing for puncture repairs. I'll be coming to a complete stationary stop, a moment or two of break and then bang straight back on the power and get them to speed as fast as possible so you can practice for all eventualities as I see in the chat there Park Levian coming in with wee so we're presuming he's on the first descent there after that initial climb Brian Welsh, we saw Stacey earlier on this, Brian, her partner, with 14.8 kilometers remaining. Concentrate on Enrico Hanowski now. We're coming up on the last sections of Enrico's ride. 450 meters remaining. Hour still at 240. 270 now currently as he's pushing on towards the end of this ride as I was saying I, I didn't quite finish my sentence this is a magic road created in RGT um, you can create all sorts of magical things NRGT roads all over the place but they also have their real roads which are more faithful recreations in fact they're as close as possible recreations to the virtual world um, sorry to the real world virtual RGT looking to be more of a road bike simulator than a game and in doing so they try and keep all of the gradients everything as close as possible to the real world as not entirely full all of the time there are some times we deviate slightly um, but the Mont Blanc 2 is a real good recreation and it's worth riding if you have a premium membership it does float around they do offer more than any of the other platforms offering free options. Uh, 
Um, having a premium membership allows you to access creation of Magic Roads for yourself, but also the training library and workouts. Here now, Ski comes up to the finish line on this 10.3% gradient, just ever so slightly starting to tick away as we get to the top. And finishes this ride in a time of 4 hours, 34 minutes and 10 seconds. Only just over the finish line and comes to a halt. That's a fantastic time for Hanowski there. All the way back to Richard Acres there, I'm not sure why. Next rider on the road. Stevens there. Stevens now under the kilometer flag, Lam Rouge, and disappearing slowly into the distance there. 
end thoughts of ending this ride. Now I must be coming into Stephen's head. Look round this corner. more hairpins away. Looking around some of the riders there, I can see that there's a few breaks taking place. Daniel Numbu is still on the road, still riding hard. 10.4% gradient. Mr. Canoe in the chat, giving an encouragement to all the riders still taking part. And Stevens, Jay Stevens now. Up to the top of the climb, you can see Janowski is still there, it's cooling down Janowski. Somebody just jumping out to the sides, give them a little as they come over the finish line there. The Shepherds going up on the Lam Rouge now.
Jerry Shepherd's there underneath that 1k. There you go, Banner. Glam Rouge. Because now with 500 meters left to go, one hairpin round, that last bend, and then the end is in sight. Harold Treese, the man just behind him, again, another rider from the Virtual World Time Trial Championships. Shepherds and in a sprint for the finish here. Power up at 
in the tank to the line over in four hours 49 minutes and 49 seconds will there be some that would be glad to have got that time 4449 Trees now, 2.4 kilometers remaining for him. Riders gradually coming into the finish line now. Trees 1.7 kilometers remaining. Harold took part in the 24 hour virtual world time trial championships and did very well. He was a community rider, but um, what I remember, he posted fantastic distance for the, for the event. I'd love to see him take part as a pro rider. But yeah, Harold Treese rode uh, 699.59 kilometers in the World Time Trial Championships, which is a phenomenal distance to be riding. The fastest rider, Antoine Dumont, 
was at 818 kilometers. It'd be great to see Harold come back and host another time with us, hopefully with a little bit more um, verification chance. Harold now coming up on the finish line, 1.43 kilometers remaining. It's not too close, but Well, we've got a few moments to spare. You can see Rich has actually delayered. He eventually got to him, he's gone down to his base layer now. Good shorts. I don't know whether that is one of the base layers that you can get, but I've got a base layer for indoor cycling, which is a very, very high wicking base layer. Actually, cooler wearing the base layer than you are. Uh, going bare chested, it wicks the moisture away from you that quickly. Uh, what fluids are we taking in there? Look like a uh, caffeine free Coke, perchance. Maybe it's uh, an 1820 coffee cold brew. Not sure Rich can hear me. Not sure he wants to hear me. He's now out of the saddle. Big effort there. Oh, ginger beer. Oh, I'm not sure I'd be drinking ginger beer. It's a little bit spicy, a bit fiery for a for a bite ride. Plenty of sugar in it though. We shook it to get it to go flat, Rich, so you're not getting any um, unwanted indigestion later on in the ride. <laughs> Full of fizz. So that's the other thing with uh, ginger beer for me. It's, uh, it's a very fizzy drink. Um, I don't know if any of you have been wa watching it as I do. I get down the uh, the wormhole of Instagram reels now. I go on Instagram to check on the, the actual socials and things and, and then end up on Instagram reels. And one of them is a challenge to drink. I think it's Sprite. Full a sprite without burping and ginger beer for me is the same effect there's no way i could drink ginger beer on the bike it uh result in some very unpleasant wind at the wrong moment rich obviously a man of stronger substance than i am our trees through the clam rouge in the distance in with me over the socials he's uh made the comment that falk is doing fantastic falk uh, mentioned him a few times earlier on the stream Fal falk's a personal friend of mine and also a member of team lou which is my team more of a community team than it is a sports racing team shall we say um but falk loves doing ever restings anything with a scent in there falk's on it loves it and He's in this ride now. I joined a little bit later, but um, he's absolutely crushing it as I knew he would. Harold now coming for the last 700 kilometers. Richard just chugging that ginger beer. There's no tomorrow. Um, those of you who aren't familiar with the online events company, Richard and myself are co-founders of the company. We put on events and we try and bring around events that mirror real world events. So there is a, an event that you can go and do, well, you don't have to do it. You can do it anytime you want really. The, the Les Singles 
the craze, which is to do all three ascents of Mont Ventoux. And basically, uh, there's different places along the course where you can go in and get a card stamped. And if you do those three ascents, then they consider you the crazed. It is a bit of a foolish thing to do the, the ascents of Mont Ventoux so repeatedly. But we did do the virtual world time trial championships and um, we had some more events coming up we're going to be releasing details about those in the near future but if you keep an eye on the socials and keep an eye on our facebook page and we would encourage you to go to the website which is the online events company.com and sign up to our newsletter where you will get direct feed straight from the horse's mouth so to speak on new events and and coordinators that we're working with the idea is that we bring you events that you would possibly struggle to do there's a lot of events nowadays you're um, getting problems with limited rider numbers and um, there might be the possibility that you can't travel to the area where the events are or you just can't take enough time off work to do them in real life there are some events now that are operating a no-fly principle so and the basis around this is that there's a worry that Will be a small number of elite riders who just um, have funding to go around all the different events and basically win them um, and that the potential is that it could become quite a uh, an uninteresting racing scene when the same riders are just bombing it around the place smashing the events um, so they have a no-fly principle for a lot of these rides now also it Ecologically, you know, it's it's not great flying into a place just to do a, to do a ride. We're trying to do a bit to be greener, help the environment. Cycling is a really good thing for the environment, unless, of course, you're taking a plane to go and fl fly somewhere and take part in a ride. This Harold is coming up now on the 200 meter marker. You can see that React tent just peeking over the cliff. That's the signifying the end. Uh, started the finish straight. Tombstone, 103 pass. technical tent and the finish straight edging towards the online events company going up at 10% there briefly We're underneath that final banner Little section must have been really hard for Harold there. Uh, creeping into the finishers enclosure. But Krajowski being left now by his Rassio racing teammates, Mark Robottom. Joe Shepherds already finished. Krajowski still on the course. Flam Rouge. No longer compliant with the UCI regulations, the Flam Rouge is an inflatable model. So what happened to Adam Yates a few years ago? The UCI done away with inflatable arches over the road. Very, very small set of circumstances that led to that inflatable arch collapsing and injuring Adam Yates and actually taking him out of the ride. He was set to finish first on that stage. But, uh, the UCI now have solid banners across the road. Not the inflatable ones. I mean, the chances that somebody else would go and accidentally unplug the 
compressor. Is it the compressor? The blower. It inflates these air banners. It is pretty low, but um, that's happened. So something that you've got to be make sure that you are covered for. Um, just an advert there above Rich's head for 10 nutrition, total endurance nutrition. They are a partner that we work with, that Richard works with in React Coaching, and they will do um, feed plans for you. Help you out with any of your nutrition needs. They did a talk for us in the last race about fueling for such long races. Um, you want to get in touch with those, and I'm sure Rich will help you get in touch with them for nutritional advice for your future races. is one of the co-founders of the online events company but rich also has his own personal bespoke training uh, coaching website and that is react.fitness it's an easy one to remember react.fitness it should be really easy to remember. I'm sure it's at the forefront of many people's minds who are interested in virtual cycling. Maybe head over there, find loads of information about Richard and React Fitness and what they can do for you to help you achieve your goals in this coming year. Not too late to get some spoke coaching training in for your event. Make sure you achieve your targets make the most of your events this year. Whether that's IRL goals or whether it's virtual racing goals, you'll be able to help you out with the plan for that as Krajowski closes in on the 500 meter marker and is nearing that airpin. Leads to the finish line. Some of you may notice that we've um, been popping up some links for Paleo Valley around the place. Paleo Valley is one of our affiliate sponsors and they are offering discounts if you follow our links through to their products. Paleo Valley is, um, their phrase now, eat consciously. Um, they're, they're into clean food, um, grass-fed beef, um, vitamins and supplements that are made from very 
sustainably sourced and organic ingredients. So I am using their bone broth protein powder, which is high in collagen and collagen is a very good thing. I think it's one of the most recent supplements to have hit the headlines. Um, collagen really good at helping to improve with um, initially your skin, um, then nails, hair, but also eventually that collagen works its way through to your ligaments and your connective tissues to help your joints and your ligaments last longer, recover stronger, better, faster. And we are with Pajowski crossing the line. You do click those links for Paleo Valley. It will take you through to discounted offerings. I think one of the links that's floating about at the moment is the picture for 50% off there. Beef sticks, which um, for those who are unfamiliar, the beef sticks are basically they're like pepper army, but they've um, been made a bit healthier. Jalapeno ones, the ones with a little bit of a spicy kick. I quite enjoy those, but they do turkey sticks as well for those who like beef. The different products I'm talking about. Canoe is just dropping in and giving some words of encouragement. And Aunt Levy and chatting back. Canoe's just going again now. Ended up jumping into the Lou Ricks Team Lou route ride that's occurring around about this time now. Skrzyjowski is finished. We've got Keith and Matre still on the road. Matre brings in 30 meters behind Keith. Keith now with 1.41 kilometers remaining. Just to see in the distance the Lam Rouge come into view around this corner. that's sent out frequently through all different coaching platforms, hydration platforms, uh, any general information you get given really by events. It's to stay on top, stay on top of your hydration and your feed. Any longer events, is, well, it's not hard, it's impossible to catch up. If you allow yourself to get into a dehydrated state, then you Basically, you will not get back from that. Um, 
important to make sure you stay on top of you if you're eating and drinking guys not just for performance related um, with regards to events but just to make sure you keep yourself healthy basically you know I don't want everybody going out and uh, nailing themselves to get really good times in an event but then making themselves ill but important that you keep yourselves fit and well as Keith comes underneath the Flam Rouge distance to Matre is dropping slightly Gap coming from 300 meters down to 277 currently but I I don't think there's any chance of Matray catching Keith on this final stage of the ride. We're in 2.24 kilometers covered. Four thousand and thirty-six meters so far for Keith. Just quickly flick over to my tray there because Trey has got a car just in the distance there. They are looking to be putting out slightly more watts per kilogram than my tray and closing slightly on them. We would have thought at this time in the ride there was going to be a race after it's been quite distance between all these riders with one kilometer remaining. Car is trying to catch the wheel of my tray and in themselves an extra flex. This car closing steadily on my tray. Friendly wave to my tray there. Okay, ups the pace slightly and stays with car. We're going into the final 800 meters for these two riders. a little bit of a flipped gear change there my tray distance slightly by car now car keeping the power on 3.8 watts per kilo I think actually cars just slightly put the power on my tray stayed at the same power and car upping the power 3.9 watts per kilogram 4 watts per kilogram into the last few hundred meters of this ride my tray is just being slightly distance car pacing this race completely different to my tray I think and they've Saved some of their power for this last section of the race, which is boding them well for distancing my tray. Got about a little lump, and I opened up a gap in that few meters, 30 meter gap. Switch over to Keith as they're coming in now to the final sections of the ride. Keith now with 350 meters left.
deer, rock face that they're climbing past. Fifty meters remaining. Ah, two hundred and sixty meters behind them, so there's no chance of car catching up with Keith here, but they have managed to open up an impressive gap on the train at a short distance. tent there. Rather striking black and red tent from Riak. The landmark showing that we are at the last hairpin. Keep there coming in on the finish line. Keep your eyes on that lower road as well guys. See if you can see any of these other riders coming up that second ascent there. In between the trees. As Keith comes across the finish line. Five hours, 21 minutes. in the distance there. Ah, oh, coming up on the last hairpin. Great, fighting valiantly to cover the distance. Close some of that gap. around that corner. Five meters to go. He's up there to join Keith. Keith was earlier on with Richard Akers. But Richard, I don't know if you're a, if you're a long whip for there for the ride then, but Richard um, gave up some of his time to speak to us and, and uh, put him back lightly in the race and the ride as Matre comes up to the finish line. riders after such a long time very close to each other mentioned there's quite a few teams have sprung up around RGT Facebook pages 
Discord and you can get involved with the events. Daniel is frequently riding the pedal airs, rides in there, team time trial events and also rides in a lot of the other events across the RGT world. And he's coming up on the finish line. Five hours, 25 minutes. That's a bit riding from Daniel there. Riders now coming in, we've got Velte and Richard Akers. Velte's been underneath that Flam Rouge. Richard Akers, 500 meters to go until he sees that beautiful red arch. Only 710 meters left for Velte now. Velte, 540 meters remaining. Very soon be able to see that. Weak black and red tent, that bright, bright beacon of finishing in the distance, just marking that hairpin. Richard Akers coming up on the Flam Rouge, 270 meters. You can see in the distance, that's marking the end of the ride for Richard there and the end of some pain big ride 100 kilometers but with this ascent such a phenomenal effort to get to the finish of this ride you can understand why they call it the crazed ride is in real life to be attacking this climb with such gusto and with curry welsh lang welsh mendes and a few more riders beyond those as well they're not showing up in the rider list there but we will get through them in a little bit Fantastic to see so many people taking on such an epic challenge on a Saturday. This road started at 10. It's going to run for 24 hours to 10 tomorrow. Anybody that's interested in cracking on and getting this ride done, there's still time to jump into the event and attack it with full gusto. I'm going to leave the stream shortly after Richard has finished. Um, but we are going to have the stream continue running. without my beautiful dulcet tones across the airwaves. Del Taylor just noticed he's wearing the Rise Up top, which is the top to celebrate the World Bicycle Relief and the Rise Up event that was mentioned before happening on RGT, I think last January. Same Velte, I'm entirely sure it might be a 
Hey, hey. Often apologize for my pronunciation of people's names. Um, I do my best. I am a lowly Mancunian. We have a strong accent and poor ability to speak foreign languages. Um, if I mask your name, if I mutilate it, I do apologize. Try and do my best as we're coming up to the react tent. And that sharp hairpin, we're at 8.1% there and cranking it up now. And this will crunch 14, 15.6%. We maxed out up there on that hairpin. Really difficult to get your pacing right for these hairpins. No time for you to change gear before you threw them. And coming up to the finish line for. Bete there, 25 meters left to go. Still pushing out 250 watts at the end of this ride. Fantastic effort. Coming across the line there. Awesome riding. reason my pops are misbehaving slightly this afternoon and they are not jumping to the correct rider as they should do um, but we have Richard Akers two versions of him going now as he comes up to the finish line IRL Richard on the bike and Two versions of Richard Acres in the virtual world back in this climb. Six hundred and eighty meters left to go. The way Richard has paced this, I'm sure he's gonna have an out of saddle effort from the last five hundred meters. Max power. Expecting a thousand watt sprint for the last part. No recognition at all, I think. Yes. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there is a slight delay on the stream, but that is Richard uh, perhaps uh, disputing my thoughts on his final performance now. Oh, he's out of the saddle, though. He's giving it his best. I'm going to put on a show for the folks at home. There is a significant difference between myself and Richard. And the difference is that Richard did the first hour and a half of this event. Streaming, commentating, running the Zoom room and riding. Whereas I did the first hour and a half of this event. Uh, stood on a cold football pitch. And I've done the rest of it sat on a chair. Um, so... <laughs> Richard's uh, well within his uh, rights to tell me to go away whenever I'm ribbing him about finishing in fine style. He's done a fantastic ride today. And he's been drinking ginger beer. Oh, the ear pods are going away. Full concentration now. 400 meters remaining. Out of the saddle, big effort. Power up over 300 there. So this is good to see. This is what everybody's been feeling, guys, as they've been finishing this event. When the look that you're seeing on Rich's face, the look of muted agony, with a little bit of uh, joy at the fact that it's going to be ended soon. see those meter markers on the side of the road getting a little bit more frequent a little closer together as they're marking off 50 meters at a time
be 50 meters. We're watching out for that gradient on that last hairpin. That real kicker that just puts it to you as you're coming through that last turn. We'll watch Richard and see how it affects his IRL tempo as it hits that 15% plus. Once again, we're seeing that react black and red tent like a beacon in the distance. Showing the end and here comes that hairpin. Here's that kicker for us guys. See how it affects the tempo of Richard as he's trying to get around this corner. And he's up out of the saddle, pushing through it, powering through that. Powers up at 413 there as he goes through that peak of that gradient into this final section. And he's not sitting down, he's putting the power down on the road. 440 watts now, 455, 452. At the end of this ride, 100 kilometers in the legs, over 4,000 meters climbing. Still pushing, still pushing for the line. Every second counts over the line and relief. Richard comes to the end there and allows himself some time to cool down. Loosen off the shoes, deep breaths. go shaking the legs out important at the end of a ride guys any ride is to make sure you do a proper cool down Bill Rich will be jumping off the bike in a moment and jumping into some yoga making sure that all those legs get stretched out all those important muscles are eased is the next rider to be coming up to the line. He's got 1.1 kilometers remaining. So ladies and gentlemen, we are going to shortly be bringing the live stream. To an end. But before we go, Richard has just commented that he's got the second quiz results ready. So um, Richard is still live in the stream. So he wants to unmute himself. He can come straight to you while he's doing his cool down and give you the results of that second quiz. So when you're ready, Richard, just hit that button and you're free to speak. Oh, hello everyone. How are you doing? Um, that was absolutely brutal. Oh, when I did the first uh, set of results, my legs just went to sleep. Absolutely brutal. But guys, got some uh, some answers for you. Um, for the. Uh, second quiz that we did. Now, earmuffs, if you don't want to hear the answers so that you can go back and do it uh, in your own time, if you want. Um, or just or just mute the stream, probably use um, <laughs> But guys, uh, so the first question was about the Festina affair, the drug scandal that saw riders arrested and 10 team officials uh, convicted. Um, I already gave away the answer. Uh, it's 1998. Um, the second question was, uh, in which city, uh, which city is Wout van Aert from Belgium? The answer, you may well not know, is Herentals. Um, there's a great cyclocross race that takes place in Herentals, and Wout van Aert makes it his business to try and win it every year. I can't remember what happened this year, actually. I have a sneaking suspicion him and Van der Poel finished in the sprint and he didn't win it. I can't remember, it's off my head. Um, but we had quite a few of these finishes this year. It's been amazing. Uh, number three, name the four men who have won the Tour de France five times. I'll be very impressed if someone got this. Um, it is the big names. So Jacques-Alain Coutil, uh, Eddie Merckx, Bernard Hino, and Miguel Indurain. It's four people to five times. Can you imagine just doing the Tour de France once in terms of distance, winning it five times? That's insane. Uh, who's the current? Who's currently the highest ranked male rider in the world? Uh, Jay Pogacar. And um, that's as of 
now. Um, who is currently the highest ranked female? Again, probably not a big surprise. And Meek Van Vluten. Um, question six was, in the last five editions, which Grand Tour is the most cumulative elevation? So if the last five kind of seasons, COVID accepted, which of the Grand Tours has done the most climbing? Um, the Tour. Uh, perhaps expected that, actually. I expected it to be the Welter, because the Welter does insane climbs. And there's not much in it. So the Tour did 2,632. Welter did 2,624. Um, that doesn't sound right, does it? Mm. Um, <laughs> uh, the Giro, 2,446. Um, number seven, who won the 1998 Tour de France prologue? Uh, riding for Credit Agricole. It was the uh, legend, Chris Boardman. Um, and there's some great photos of him in his horrible Credit Agricole kit. Um, but yeah, he was a real pioneer of time trial. If you go through his Palmeiras, it's pretty much all time trials. <laughs> um, but yeah, absolute legend. Um, number eight, name these two people, uh, what they have in common. Uh, so you need to have a look at the quiz. So um, uh, I might not spill, spoil that one, actually. Um, I'll give you, yeah. Uh, no, I'll just leave that one because, um, yeah, you need to go onto the quiz to have a look at that one. Otherwise, um, what's the fun? Uh, so, which group set did Jonas Vingard ride to victory in the Tour of France last year? Uh, it was Shimano. Uh, Jabba Bisma in the last month actually moved on to SRAM um, uh, with some, yeah, mixed, mixed results, shall we say. Um, number 10, uh, again, who is this? Uh, there's a picture around, so you need to do that quiz uh, via the link. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, when you do, when you go do the, 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 the quiz and you see my uh, you see the answers. I left, a, I left a comment, which I perhaps shouldn't do over over live stream over the, who that is and and why they are bizarrely not notorious. Anyway, um, number eleven. Which of the five monuments is known as the Sprinters Classic? Uh, Milan San Remo. Yeah. Um, yeah. You pretty flat, and then you've got a couple of climbs in the finish uh, where it gets a bit hairy. Um, but fantastic race from San Remo. I think it's the longest one as well. It's like 300 k's or something crazy. Uh, number 12, excluding level two races, which country had the most professional wins in 2022? France. I, yeah, so, so a lot of these answers are from pro cycling stats, so they're pretty legit. But yeah, France. Now, I challenge you, um, name French winners other than Philippe, who I believe was actually injured for quite a lot of last season. So yeah. Really interested in that one. Um, number 13, who was the surprise second place finisher at the 2022 edition of Liège Bastogne Liège and uh, beating Wout van Aert in the sprint? It was Quinton Hermans. Now, if you don't know Quinton, he's a bit of a cyclocross legend um, and he's just earned himself uh, a move to Alpecin uh, de Kernic, is what they are now, I think. Um, yeah, he had a fantastic showing in the Giro d'Italia last year and then, yeah, did an incredible result at Liège Bastogne Liège. So it'll be interesting to see how he gets on. Um, teaming up with, with Matthew van der Poel. Uh, number 14, which female cyclist bagged the most pro wins in 2022? Lorena Weebs. Uh, she's a real dark horse. Well, she's not. She's a fantastic athlete. But yeah, you'd expect Amelie Van Bleusen or, or Voss already on that one. Um, or Norge Borghini. But no, Lorena Weebs. And uh, no, last question then for the second quiz. Which of the famous climbs has is the most visited climb ever in professional bike racing? I was surprised by this one. Um, it's Montjuic. So the options, I believe, were uh, uh, cool. What were the options again? Let's just go down. Um, Col d'Ez, Col de Paris Sword, and Montjuic. Montjuic, yeah. Um, and bonus point if you can, if you know which country that climb is in. Uh, so there you go, guys. That's the results for the second quiz. Really well done, everyone. Um, I'm 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 breaking. I'm, I'm very tired. That was mind over matter. Haven't done much base smiles, so that was very much at the end of my range. But really well done, everyone, and thanks very much for your company. Um, I'll sign off and I'll allow Riley to do his thing. Oh, great to see Richard Akers there. He's still um, happy and enthusiastic after having done that ride. Uh, fantastic amount of effort there for him to complete that sort of 
level of ride, but he still cracked on and did it, even though, as he says, he was perhaps uh, a little unprepared for that distance and elevation today. But um, yeah, fantastic riding. Um, I think some of you may have heard me mention that we are going to switch over now to doing a, an auto stream. So hopefully that'll capture everybody as they're going through and continuing the ride. The ride's going to continue for uh, the majority of the rest of the day. Um, not sure how many people will be taking part in it, um, but it's open for any riders that jump in and out. We have got uh, Dieter Doberman, um, Poirier and Felt Levian who started a little bit later who are going to be still cracking on. Uh, we've got Brian Welsh and Stacey Welsh who have still got a little while left to go to finish this event. But yeah, we're going to switch over to um, some auto streaming. So hopefully that'll just switch around and, and show you all the different rides that go through. And really appreciate you jumping into the stream, spending time with us. Um, any messages that we've had over the socials have been really appreciated. And hope you've enjoyed the event. If you keep an eye open on the online events company.com, we are going to be releasing some more events in the future and keeping you up to date. But the best thing to do is to sign up to the newsletter. So if you head over to the online events company.com, there's multiple places there where you can jump in and sign up for the newsletter. And we will directly um, make you aware of any events and things that are coming up in the future. We're not spammers. You won't get thousands of emails from us. Um, you just get the occasional message from us when something new is coming up. And as per usual with emails nowadays, there is an obvious and easy to see unsubscribe button in the, the bottom. So if you join in, feel that the information is not for you or it's a bit too frequent, whatever, then you can unsubscribe. But we do ask that if you do that, give us a little bit of feedback because we'd like to know how to improve for the future. We don't want people unsubscribing. We want to make sure that the information is targeted and um, works for you. We want people to stay with us. Um, but yeah, that's it. We're going to switch over to the auto stream bots. Um, you may see a little bit of our bots a little bit more frequently than we'd like, but we can't avoid them being in the stream, unfortunately, but it will switch around between the other riders. And we hope you enjoy the rest of the stream as it goes. I think it'll run for another couple of hours while the, the guys that are in there now finish. Um, yeah, it's been a fantastic event. Another great event by the online events company. And we hope you've enjoyed it. It's one that we hope to run annually, perhaps more than once. Um, but we'll definitely be running it annually. There's uh, another ride coming up soon, um, which I'm not going to mention. I'm going to say, yeah, sign up to the newsletter and you'll find out about it directly. Um, we hope to be bringing you some new information out soon um, and some new events. And we really want you to be in there and taking part. So that's it for me. Stay with the stream. Stay with my funky music and um, stay watching these guys as they punish themselves in these slopes. Have a great day.
devil.
Stacey Welsh with 6.79 kilometers still to go. Just uh, having a brief pause there. See that Hannah Court has joined. And they've got uh, just near the beginning of their adventure. And Dita Doberman still going strong. They're in there for the long haul, Dita. And Falk Levian still rocking it. Had a fantastic time. For, for a year. For a year? For a year? Now with 42.27 kilometers remaining.
next level.
next level.
next level.